Doing a little bit of cleanup today, getting into Tyreek Cohen signing with the New York Jets, the latest at OTAs, and Aaron Rodgers coming up limping. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! All right, welcome in. I'm excited to have you guys here. It has been a minute since I have created a video, basically since the schedule release. I have been nonstop at work, and I finally got a little bit of free time to do a little bit of recap and taking a look at some of the latest news from OTAs and a video that made me absolutely <laughs> cringe and cry and just oh ptsd flashbacks of aaron Rodgers uh, coming up limping but we want to get into all of that as well as tyree Cohn coming into the new york jets so without further ado let's hop into the stories for today first up i want to go into tariq cohen signing with the new york jets he signs a i guess a one-year deal right now this coming by way of adam schefter now some of his statistics over the course of the last uh, bunch of years look he hasn't played really in forever if you look at his statistics right here 2017 2018 had over 1500 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns and then 2019 a uh, little bit of a tick down just a shade under a thousand yards and then obviously in 2020 he sustained a torn acl i believe it was on a fair catch if i'm not mistaken and then basically since 2020 has just had life event after life event happen and if you guys haven't read his column uh you should absolutely do it it's it's really tragic what has happened to him he's lost both his brothers in the span of the last four years had the acl injury had an achilles injury and now he's finally trying to come back and play in the nfl last year he was with the panthers practice squad i think till the end of the year if i'm not mistaken or partway through the year uh but he's coming into camp camp body jets obviously drafted braylon allen and isaiah davis to go along with Brees hall and izzy abanacanda so from an outward perspective, looking at the running back room, you're saying, I don't think they're going to carry five running backs, or maybe you think Izzy could potentially be on the way out. I don't think this necessarily impacts the running back room, uh, even though that's his listed position. I think this is definitely more of the return side of things with the changing of the special teams rules. I think there's going to be some extra opportunities for players that maybe you don't want to risk in the return game, but you need some explosive playmakers on those plays to try and you know capitalize on any any kind of points you can get <clears throat> if you look at his return prowess uh his rookie year had 583 returned yards right here you have his punt return yards the next two years over 400 and then around 300 but really a, a pretty solid returner all things considered now look i think this is probably more of a camp body move than anything else i think it's probably little less likely that Tariq Cohen ends up making the Jets' final roster here. But at the very least, I'm excited to see him from a football fan's perspective try to bounce back from everything he's gone through, whether he makes our team or finds a way onto another team because of being highlighted by the New York Jets and all the publicity that's coming around uh, us. Maybe this guy can stick in the league. I would really like to see it. I'm pulling for him as far as a comeback story goes. But I think the Jets roster is just too good. And it's not a, a, a knock against Tariq Cohen as much as it is a testament to the Jets' actual roster. And four years off from uh, from playing football or three and a half years, whatever it wound up being, uh, that's going to be kind of tough. So I, I don't think he's going to be able to make the team realistically. But I'm pulling for the guy. Uh, the next thing up absolutely terrifying aaron Rodgers on the side of practice looking at his right heel and people are freaking out They're like oh my god what is going on and then you start seeing him taking snaps and and, and running around and it does not look like he's at 100 percent right here it's just there's that little bit of a limp and you can clearly see this is concerning <laughs> at least from like my my perspective watching it on on first review and then i get back and i think well it's not the achilles because he tore his achilles on his left leg not the right leg so them looking at the right leg tells me it's something different and from what i've been hearing it seems like this is probably blisters he's putting a little bit too much uh emphasis on his right foot maybe to try and take a little bit of the <clears throat> try to take a little bit of the uh pressure going on that left achilles i don't really know maybe he's just favoring it in that capacity i've heard blisters i think until i see anything else otherwise that's what i'm going to be rolling with and man i'm not going to lie when i saw this i panicked <laughs> the, all the ptsd of week one this past year just came flooding back and i was like no not again don't do it so aaron Rodgers, right now we'll keep an eye on this but i don't think there's anything to be worried about from like the achilles side of things this is a totally separate issue and hopefully it's just blisters getting back into the swing of training camp 
So not too much there. As far as other training camp notes, if you guys haven't been following Robbie Sabo, he's been going to all the OTAs. Highly recommend him as a Twitter follow. Uh, this is some of his stock up, stock down. So stock up, Kenny Yabo getting a lot of looks and love. I love seeing that. I know Greenbean loves seeing that. Yabo is his boy. And as far as tight ends go, you got to think it's going to be Conklin, Ruckert, and then you're trying to figure out, is it going to be Koontz, the high-end, high RAS score guy that we took at the end of last year's draft? Or is it going to be Kenny Yabo, who's providing some special teams love? Uh, I would tend to give the... Uh, the nudge, I guess, or the um, the benefit to uh, to Yaboa here. Uh, Braylon Allen getting plenty of reps. I really like that. I think Braylon Allen's going to wind up being running back too. I think you're going to see him be more of that Delvin Cook, thunder, lightning kind of thing with Brees. I think he is going to ultimately be running back too. Isaiah Davis also getting plenty of reps. Right now, uh, a right downhill hits hole quickly. So I do think Isaiah Davis is going to be used more towards the goal line, short yardage situations, and really try to like bully defensive players and run over guys. Like as much as Allen's got a, a nasty stiff arm and so does Brees, if you can kind of save their legs and let someone that's a little bit more of a bruiser maybe come in uh, and do that, I like that a lot. I really like his blocking too. Dom C got to meet with Isaiah Davis down at the senior bowl and his favorite thing was putting linebackers that are blitzing on their ass. So I really, really like Isaiah Davis. And now as far as Izzy Abanacanda goes, uh, Look, I, I think there's going to be a spot for him on this team, but it's just a matter of how it all shakes out, and we'll get to him in just a, just a little bit here. Uh, Isaiah Oliver, all uh, so versatile as cornerback four, safety three, and a backup slot. I really like the addition of Isaiah Oliver. I thought this was kind of a move to sort of replace Justin Hardy and sort of replace Javelin Guidry. So seeing him have those types of uh, flexibilities between positions and also giving us some safety flexibility, I think is pretty cool. I do honestly want to see... Ashton Davis, Tony Adams, and uh, Chuck Clark as our main safeties. But if this guy can provide us some depth, I think that'll be uh, right as rain. Quantez Stiggers, our draft pick from the Canadian Football League. Excellent one-on-one -on -one coverage against Lazard in the red zone team sessions. A watch for this kid climbing. Watch for this kid climbing up the depth chart. This is really exciting. This could be a high upside swing at the cornerback position in a year that we need a little bit of development behind DJ Reed, behind Michael Carter II, and behind Brandon Eccles because we are losing all of them potentially at the end of the year in the final years of their contract. Now, I do tend to think we'll probably wind up bringing Michael Carter the second back. I think Reed's just going to be a little too much money, and I think he'll be able to get a really nice, attractive offer from somewhere else. Um, but at the very least, if you can have Stiggers <clears throat> replace... Brandon Eccles, I think that's a that's a home run. So we'll keep an eye on that. Xavier Gibson, don't sleep on his offensive contribution with all the Corley hype. So I do think Corley's going to be like slot one or gadget player one, but Gibson's absolutely going to be gadget player two. We saw plenty of explosiveness out of him. I would like to see him kind of hold on to the ball a little bit more. His kick returning and, and maybe not cleanly fielding some punts and kicks was a little bit more of my concern, but I like the growth here, so hopefully he can wind up sticking behind Corley. Aaron Rodgers, his identity, like a Hall of Fame quarterback, is take what the defense gives us. So, look, our defense is going to be elite no matter when you're going after it, but I think seeing how many playmakers we have on this offense just makes me feel that much more comfortable that Rodgers can distribute the ball and really take what the defense gives him. Literally any player that you get the balls, the ball into their hands. <clears throat> sorry, getting a little bit over a cold. Uh, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Corley. These guys are major yak contributors. They're going to be able to generate a lot, <clears throat> a lot of yardage after the catch, even if it's just near the line of scrimmage. So I have no issues with that whatsoever. I'm not looking for Aaron Rodgers to be airing the ball out crazy tons deep down the field. I want to play ball control and get yardage when we can. <clears throat> as far as the down side of yesterday's practice, Malachi Corley assumed early injury, left sessions, didn't return, uh, uh, returned, but didn't participate. So we'll keep an eye on that. I don't actually know what the injury was to him. So hopefully he's right as rain as it goes forward. Uh, JBC, haven't really seen a lot of him since he was drafted last year. Not a good sign that Oliver bumped him away from safety, so maybe JBC could be on the practice squad when all things are said and done. We really just haven't seen a lot from him last year. We're going to keep an eye on him throughout training camp, but doesn't seem too good with Isaiah Oliver. Already having that 49ers kind of connection, uh, maybe that's something that, that we want to keep an eye on. Jeremy Ruckert, is Yaboa speeding past him? This is interesting. So I was not considering Ruckert as potentially tight end three, but Yaboa playing better and Ruckert still being the blocking tight end and still having a pretty high upside 
is pretty good. And now, as much as that might be down on Ruckert, I, you're, we're going to carry three tight ends anyway, so I'm not not terribly concerned. But I'd like to see uh, you know, that competition between Ruckert and Yeboah, and maybe we can uh, iron sharpens iron, that sort of thing. Tyrod Taylor, not really a stock down guy, but man, he doesn't take many chances, just knows his role pretty well, can't get on him fully. So as much as this is listed as a down for Sabo, uh, Tyrod Taylor, that's just kind of who he is. If you look across like all his statistics, I'm pretty sure he's like almost the same touchdowns to interception, or no, 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 it's wins and losses, like 50, 50, 50, and then touchdowns, I think are two to one uh, touchdown interception ratio, just going off the top of my head. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, I'm not expecting a whole crazy ton. I'm expecting a very high floor from Tyrod. I want him to get the ball into our playmaker's hands and just let those guys make some elite plays. I don't need Tyrod, you know, going playing superhero uh, back there at quarterback. So as much as it's maybe down <clears throat> on Tyrod, I'm not that uh, banged up about this. Izzy Abanacanda, not great sign for him that Tariq Cohen is in the house. It definitely isn't, and I think Cohen could at least push Izzy. I would be a little surprised if Izzy didn't make the roster purely based on his age and potential upside. Now, if he just didn't show a lot all of last year and the coaches were not uh, overly impressed, which you would think bringing in two running backs through the draft and using assets on that and bringing in Tyree Cohen, that's got to tell you something for where they kind of stand on Izzy. But we'll keep an eye on that. I do think the Jets are going to carry four. I think Cohen's going to be a little bit of a, a long shot to make the roster. Izzy with some controllable cheap years, I, I still feel like has the inside track. Uh, and then Alan Lazard, got to come down with tougher red zone looks from Aaron Rodgers. One saw Stiggers on him tight. Another saw a lower throw with his hands on it incomplete. So we're all hoping that Alan Lazard is going to be able to turn it around and have a more Green Bay-esque season than what we saw out of him year one with the New York Jets with the return of Aaron Rodgers. And from the very start of these OTAs, it doesn't seem like it's super comforting to to hear what's coming out about alan lazard as far as maybe some maybe concentration drops or not being able to to beat a guy that we drafted in what the sixth or seventh round in, in Quantes stiggers so definitely got to keep an eye on him now as far as lazard is concerned in the pecking order of reps when i'm thinking of targets obviously Brees hall is going to get more touches than lazard garrett's going to get more looks than lazard mike williams when he eventually comes back he will get more looks than Lazard. I think Conklin's going to get more looks than Lazard. I think Corley's going to get more opportunities in prime situations than I think Lazard. So at the very least, you're probably talking about Alan Lazard being the sixth receiving option for the New York Jets. And if that's kind of the case and we're not overly relying on him, then I'm feeling a little bit better about that. But I would love to utilize a six foot five frame. This guy's like a big dude. I want him to be that red zone threat if he can be, or at least help uh, you know, in the in the time that Mike Williams is not able to be there for the New York Jets in the event Mike Williams can't start week one or something along those lines. So overall, training camp seems to be going underway, uh, or OTA seem to be going underway. Lots of things to keep an eye on. Still no pads on yet. It's hard to get any, like, you know, too hyped about too much stuff. But man, if you guys didn't listen to Green Bean's hype rant during the middle <laughs> of the talking Jets panel this past week, I was ready to run through a brick wall. I am excited for this. Training camp cannot come soon enough. Boys and girls, let me know your thoughts of Tyreek Cohen. Let me know your thoughts about Aaron Rodgers and him coming up limping. Let me know all your thoughts of the latest on training camp down below in the comment section. And as always, go Jets. Yeah!